In this session, I will introduce multiple linear regression. Whenever we do this kind of study, the first thing that we should always do is to do a scatter plot because the scatter plot will tell you whether the variables are really related to each other in a linear way or not. Because if they are not related in a linear manner, by linear I mean if you plot x and y and if you get a pattern like this, so it looks like it is linear. Like as x goes up, y also goes up. So it could be positive linear or it could be negative linear like in the opposite direction. So scatter plot will confirm whether or not there is a linear relation between two variables or among different variables. For multiple linear regression, when you are developing this equation, obviously you have more than one x variable. So your equation may look like b0, which is the y-intercept, and then the slope b1 with variable first independent variable x1 plus b2, x2, and so on. Depending on how many variables you have, it can go from 1 to n. So labor cost equals B0 plus B1 times, you can say, labor hours plus B2 times mileage. Now, depending on whether labor hours or mileage has a significant contribution to the overall model, if any one of them do not have significant contribution, they may be dropped. For example, if mileage is not contributing, so this may go out and we may be left with a simple linear regression where labor cost is dependent only on labor hours. So this I will import the data set which is on my desktop and the file is a CSV file not Excel and I will simply open it and import it. So you can see this vehicle file has 1, 6, 2, 4 observations with 7 variables. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But in this particular study, we are only interested in mileage, labor hours, and labor costs. So we'll ignore all other variables. I'm going to close this tab. So note that when I close that uh, view, it does not mean that uh, the data is not available anymore. So under data, you can see on the right side that vehicle file is still there. So if you are starting something new, you can always click on this plus sign and say our script and it will open an empty window. If you want to clear everything to start afresh in this console option or window, you can say control L. So that will clean everything. So let's look at head vehicle just to see what type of data we have. So you can see all that. So we'll use pairs for vehicle and we will use only you can see here this is first second so third fourth and fifth variables so I will say three colon five so I want to see that scatter plot and you can see labor hours and labor cost are related to each other in a stronger way and mileage versus labor hours not that strong correlation similarly mileage versus labor cost is not a very strong correlation. But we'll go ahead and try to develop the first model. I'm going to name this as, so what we'll do is, we'll develop this multiple linear regression model and save the results in a variable called results. So this name is given by us. You can simply say maybe A, B, C, Z, anything. So I'm using results here and then this less than and dash sign, which means that results will be assigned whatever we do on the right side. And we are going to make use of a function called LM. So LM is linear model. And we are developing a linear model for labor cost. So I'm using this uh, name as it is. And then this tilde sign. And we want to include mileage and labor hours. Now, if you have more than two variables, you can always 
just uh, keep on adding using a plus sign so you can add as many variables as you like and once you have used all the variables in which you are interested then you have to specify what is your data file so our file is vehicle so now i can run this and if you want to look at the results so type results and run it it will give you the outcome so it will give you all the coefficients so intercept is 1.375 so our model will look like this labor cost the coefficient for mileage is so this means negative 8.47 times 10 to the power of negative 5 which is 0 0.1234 because this is negative 5 so four zeros and then eight four seven obviously with a negative sign so that's our coefficient zero point zero 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 eight four seven for the mileage seventy three point five five labor hours so this is the linear model we get by fitting this data now you can get some more outcome by looking at the summary and if we run this you can see you'll get some more uh, information for the coefficients not only the coefficients uh, that we just now wrote 1.375 and negative and all those numbers you also have some further statistical analysis but the most important column is the last column so this is the probability value these are the p values which tells you whether a variable in the model is really contributing significantly or not these stars indicate how significant that variable is in the model like whether it is playing a significant role or not so if it is three star that means uh, very highly significant if it is two star slightly less one star slightly less but still significant if there is no star like for mileage that means mileage is not really playing any significant role any statistically significant role towards this model of predicting labor cost from mileage in labor hours so if it is not playing a significant role the natural thing will be to delete this from further analysis so we can drop this variable and develop our model only based on labor hours because mileage is not contributing now these stars also you can see if you have a two star that means the significance level is 0 0.01 now how do we interpret this 0 0.01 in fact in this case because you have three star let's use three star value so this is 0 0.001 and from this p value if you do 1 minus p which in this case becomes 1 minus 0 0.001 you get 0 0.999 or 99.9 percent .9 confidence which means if you treat labor hours as a statistically significant variable your confidence level is 99.9 percent .9 so that's a high level of confidence and that's what we look for like default value is 95 anything more than 95 percent is really good that's the interpretation of the stars and the p-values similarly if you look at p-value for mileage which is 0 0.201 you can say 0 0.2 so 1 minus 0.2 is 0 0.8 so if you conclude that mileage is really important or significant then your confidence level is 1 minus 0 0.2 which is 80 percent so anything less than 95 percent is not really that good 80 percent confidence is not good that's why we can say mileage is not really significant these interpretations are about individual variables using p-values now if you look at towards the bottom you will see some further information provided you have f statistic based on that f statistic they have also created another p value and the interpretation of this p value is same as what i have told you earlier 
So you just do 1 minus this number. Now this number is very, very small, like 10 to the power of negative 16. So 0 0.0000, almost 100%. Two other numbers that you may notice here are R square, multiple R square, and adjusted R square. 0.95 means the variables in the model contribute 95% to the overall variability, which is very good. So you have variables that are contributing high. If you see R squared values which are like 0 0.01 or like only 5%, 2% or 10%, that's not really a good model or those variables are not really contributing much. In predicting labor cost for this data, you are covering like almost 95% of the variation by using just two variables. So that's a very good sign. Only like uh, remaining 5% is the unexplained part. So if you try to bring more variables in this model, you are addressing only that 5% remaining. And that's not really going to add too much value. Generally, we develop final model based on significant variables. I will take out mileage and only keep labor hours in that model and repeat those three lines. So still it is significant. And if you have to say what is your final model based on this data, then you should write negative 0.236 and then plus for the labor hours, coefficient is labor hours. So this would be the final model because we have taken out a variable that was not statistically significant, in this case mileage, and we get this final model. You can also compare the full model in this case where all the variables in which we are interested are included versus the reduced model where we have only those variables which we feel are significantly contributing. You can do let's say reduced linear model where labor cost is a function of labor hours where vehicle is our data. So data file is vehicle. So I will run this line and I will also write down full model and our data file is vehicle. So I will run this model also and then we can do what is called ANOVA for reduced comma full. ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. So by doing analysis of variance, which summarizes the results in the form of a, a table, uh, let's run that. I will run this line and you get the results. So again, the results are in the form of a p-value. So all this statistical analysis is summarized in the form of a p-value. Now p-value is not significant as you can see like 1 minus 0.2 is only 0.8. So confidence level will be 80% if you treat uh, this as significant. So this means that by adding this variable mileage, we are not adding any significant information to the model. We are not gaining any significant information from the model by adding this variable. I have used uh, this simple case. Your full model may include maybe depending on the data you have, maybe uh, three more variables or maybe 15 more variables. And just by using these three lines, you can figure out whether adding all those extra variables is creating any real value or not. So in this case, it is not because it is not significant. Obviously, we develop models so that we can do some prediction. We'll use default of 95% confidence predict and we want to predict from results remember our last results were based on this model of significant variables so predict from results comma so we want to specify a data frame data dot frame and you can say labor hours let's say we want to predict for 10 hours what will be the labor cost and then comma our interval equals 
confidence. So we have to specify that we are doing a confidence interval prediction. Once you run this line, you can see it gives you a lower and upper value. Fitted value is the average and it can go from $728.92 to $740.78. So those are the lower and upper bounds of this 95% confidence interval. On the course website, I have also uploaded a file called multiple linear regression, which also gives you uh, similar details using another example. And I, I suggest uh, you can go through this also. Uh, note that they are reading the data file using this command. Obviously, this command is uh, for their particular computer, so it may not work on your computer. But uh, you get the idea by looking at the commands and the output, what they're trying to do.